This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Monday, November 25th, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to CBN News, the American Center for Law and Justice says the Obama administration should never have struck a deal with Iran without part of the terms being the release of imprisoned pastor Saeed Abedini, as well as other Americans being held in Iranian prisons. ACLJ Chief Counsel Jay Sekulow says basically President Barack Obama and Secretary of State John Kerry turned their backs on their fellow Americans. It is outrageous and a betrayal of American Pastor Saeed Abedini, who has spent more than a year in an Iranian prison simply because of his faith. Sekulow said following word of a deal with the Islamic Republic of Iran over its nuclear program and world sanctions against it. The Obama administration has left Pastor Saeed behind and by failing to secure his release as a precondition to any negotiations, the Obama administration sends a troubling message to the Iranian government that Americans are expendable. The ACLJ has been working on a worldwide campaign for the release of Pastor Saeed, who has been in prison for more than a year simply for his faith in Jesus Christ. Second today, according to Religion News Service, a federal judge has ruled that an internal revenue service exemption that gives clergy tax-free housing allowances is unconstitutional. The exemption applies to an estimated 44,000 ministers, priests, rabbis, imams, and others. If the ruling stands, some clergy members could experience an estimated 5 to 10 percent cut in take-home pay. U.S. District Court Judge Barbara Crabb ruled on Friday, November 22nd, in favor of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, saying the exemption violates the Establishment Clause because it provides a benefit to religious persons and no one else, even though doing so is not necessary to alleviate a special burden on religious exercise. The case decided in the District Court for the Western District of Wisconsin will likely be appealed to the Seventh Circuit which could reverse the decision. However, if the court decision stands, it could have a significant impact on clergy income. Third today, according to the Associated Press, after feverishly trying to derail the international community's nuclear deal with Iran in recent weeks, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now has little choice but to accept an agreement that he has derided as deeply flawed. Netanyahu believes the six-month deal leaves Iran's military nuclear capabilities largely intact while giving Iran relief from painful economic sanctions, undermining negotiations on the next stage. At the same time, Israel's strongest piece of leverage, the threat of a military strike on Iran, seems to be out of the question, despite Netanyahu's insistence it would remain on the table. Netanyahu told his cabinet on Sunday, Today, the world became a much more dangerous place because the most dangerous regime in the world made a significant step in obtaining the most dangerous weapons in the world. He called the deal a historic mistake. He said Israel was not bound by the agreement and reiterated Israel's right to defend itself by itself, a veiled reference to a possible military strike against Iran. Fourth today, according to Breaking Christian News, since 2010, Houston area churches have provided an alternative to frenzied Christmas shopping on the day after Thanksgiving. Continuing this tradition, Memorial Drive Presbyterian Church, Beacon of Light Christian Center, St. John the Divine Episcopal Church, St. Francis Episcopal Church, and the Woodlands Community Presbyterian Church are each scheduling community service projects on Friday, November 29th. These churches ask families and individuals to celebrate Blessed Friday as an alternative to Black Friday. Chuck Fox, founder of Blessed Friday, stated, I am excited that the Woodlands Community Presbyterian Church and St. Francis Episcopal Church are joining Blessed Friday this year. People get our message that when we focus too much on buying things, we lose sight of the real reason for Christmas, remembering and honoring Jesus Christ. We want to begin our Christmas celebration by serving others just as Jesus did. Fifth today, according to WOWT News, Sunday marked the second annual Take a Black Youth to Worship Day. 
The goal is to change the behavior of many black youth from negative, self-destructive patterns to more positive ones such as faith. Willie Hamilton of Omaha's Black Men United, which along with King Solomon Missionary Baptist Church were among those partnering for the event, said it's to bring the focus back to where it should be, back to our Christian faith. They invited anyone in the city to participate, and the response was positive. Hamilton said around 25 churches were involved this year and hopes it will grow in the future. Next year, he said, we believe it's going to be a phenomenal event. We want to have at least 50 churches or more involved with it. Six today, according to DNA Info Chicago, one man was killed and six others were wounded in shootings across the south and west side since Friday evening. A 34-year-old man was fatally shot in the South Deering neighborhood early Saturday morning. About 12.15 a.m., Jeffrey Whiters was standing on the sidewalk in the 2400 block of East 100th Street when he was shot in his right thigh and left side. Whiters of the 1200 block of West 74th Place was taken to Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oak Lawn, where he was pronounced dead at 2.47 a.m. No one was in custody in connection with the shooting as of early Saturday morning. In the most recent incident, a 33-year-old man was shot in the lower back around 6.10 p.m. on Saturday in the 1000 block of West 93rd Street. The man was taken in stable condition to the same hospital in Oak Lawn. No word on his condition. 7. Today, according to Religion News Service, a cycle of violence in the Central African Republic is quickly degenerating into a religious conflict between Christians and Muslims amid a deteriorating humanitarian crisis, church leaders and the UN officials warned. The landlocked nation of 4.6 million people has experienced chaos since March when an Islamist rebel alliance known as Sakala overthrew President Francois Bozizi a Christian and installed rebel commander Mikhail Jotodia as president. Salika was formed in December 2012 when Islamist and other rebel groups from Chad and Sudan joined forces. The militants had crossed into the country attacking government installations and destroying churches and church missions, businesses, and homes. Church leaders say the violence is surging while UN officials say the situation is slowly degenerating into a Christian-Muslim conflict as the rebels escalate attacks and Christian militia retaliate. Some have voiced fears of a potential genocide. Eighth today, according to VOA News, Indonesia ordered the evacuation of 15,000 residents near an active volcano in the west of the vast island on Sunday, as authorities raised the emergency alert to the highest level. Mount Sinabung on the island of Sumatra has become increasingly active in recent months, spewing columns of ash miles into the air. Authorities expanded the evacuation radius to three miles while the military geared up to move residents out. About 6,000 have already been evacuated from the area, which is relatively close to Medan, the capital of North Sumatra province. No casualties were reported as the status of the volcano was raised from standby to caution. Nine today, according to the Los Angeles Times, a deadly winter-like storm already blamed for eight deaths continuing its trek east throughout the southwest on Sunday, disrupting hundreds of flights and a possible preview of Thanksgiving travel hassles. Meanwhile, an Arctic air mass brought freezing temperatures to much of the northeast and the upper Midwest in what the National Weather Service called the coldest weather of the season. The wintry system slushed through New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas on Sunday, dumping heavy snow over several areas in New Mexico and sleet that forced the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport to pre-cancel about 300 flights. With more than 43 million Americans expected to travel more than 50 miles for Thanksgiving, according to AAA, meteorologists expect the East Coast to get soaked with rain and wintry storms on Wednesday the busiest day of Thanksgiving travel. Tenth and finally today, according to WUSA-TV, police have identified a 26-year-old postal worker who was gunned down while delivering mail as Tyson Barnett of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Barnett was on his assigned route in the 1600 block of Reed Street in Landover around 7.30 p.m. on Saturday. On Saturday, when police say he was shot multiple times. 
Prince George's County Police are offering a 25000 reward for help in identifying suspects. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service is putting up a $100,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and to a conviction. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.